For most Christians there is a longing to know God, a longing to be closer, more intimate with God, to have a more intimate relationship with God himself. Now while the doctrines of the church are essential for our salvation, essential in that they protect us from falling into heresy, and the early church teaches us that to think wrongly about God is as immoral as wrong behavior, as adultery and theft and so on. So it's guard ourselves against heresy. But we cannot know God through the intellect, through the rational mind. And we cannot know God through the five senses. We must repent, we must live a life that draws us closer to him, but ultimately we only know God in prayer, through prayer. And for this, the church gives us the Jesus prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. A prayer based on a number of pieces of Holy Scripture, but first of all, primarily based on that story recounted in the Gospel of St. Luke, the parable that Jesus taught about the, the Pharisee and the tax collector who go up to the temple, and the Pharisee is proud, but the tax collector beats his chest and says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. And it is he, the tax collector, we're told, who went away justified. And so the church gives us this prayer based on these words of pleading that reflect the condition of our heart when we are aware of the sinfulness of our own hearts before God, then true prayer is possible. St. Paul says to us that we are to pray without ceasing. In other words, we are to constantly have the remembrance of God before us. Always remember that we are living in the presence of God St. Gregory the Theologian says to us that the remembrance of God is more vital, more important than it is to breathe. Remembrance of God is more important to us than our physical life. It is more essential, more necessary. So let us try to cultivate the sense of living in the presence of God. It is a prayer of the heart that Jesus' prayer that is like an arrow, though it is often referred to as the arrow prayer, because it fires out, it is short and quick, and it is immediate, a cry, a plea to God. But the Jesus prayer also is a way of training, training our mind, training our heart into the remembrance of God, training ourselves to be able to pray. Very often people will say when they come to pray, their minds are, are bombarded with, with many, many different thoughts, many distractions. Our bishop, Bishop Irenae, used a marvellous example of the Tour de France. He said, if we were to this next week decide to join the Tour de France, get on our bicycles and enter the race, we would probably last a mile or so and collapse on the side of the road because we're not ready, we haven't prepared ourselves. Similarly, St. Uh, Bishop Bernays says to us that it is the same with prayer. If we just try to begin to pray, then we haven't prepared ourselves, we aren't ready. We must develop our ability to pray. One of the fathers says to us, nothing teaches prayer more than prayer. So we must pray, pray, pray. Develop our ability to focus on God. Develop our ability to withstand temptations and distractions. The Jesus Prayer sums up our longing then, our longing and our condition. It is a cry to God, yes, for forgiveness. But when we use the word mercy, it has more than one meaning. When the Roman emperors would return victorious to the great cities. The crowds would gather and cry out, have mercy on us, have mercy on us. And the emperor would, would throw gold and, and riches to them, coins, to bless them in reward to celebrate his victory. So too, when we cry out, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on us, we are asking Christ to pour his grace upon us, to bless us, grant us an abundance of his wealth, his treasure, the Holy Spirit, his grace. When we begin to pray the Jesus Prayer, we begin to find it stills and helps us to overcome these distractions. And eventually, we are able to move beyond this, 
this crowded intellect, this crowded mind of ours, so full of thoughts and plans and memories and images and fantasies. The Jesus Prayer helps us to move beyond the mind, move beyond the mind where we create thoughts and where thoughts come as temptations, move beyond the mind to the heart, to begin to pray where there is stillness beyond our rational mind. And so the Jesus Prayer is a means given to us by God to enter into communion with God, to bypass the crowded intellect that is filled with so much nonsense. Until ultimately, we pray and we hope and we, and we seek that silence, that stillness within ourselves where we have nothing, not even ourselves except for Christ.